If you're trying to generate images with AI and finding that the results are a little bit mm, meh or just plain weird, then this video is for you. I'm going to take you through some core prompting skills that will completely change the way that you can generate images. We're going to have a look at some of the things that are honestly just kind of funny fails that are not about you and an absolutely amazing tip that I figured out that that will just you'll never look back from this. I'm starting here in Copilot Pro. This is using the DALI 3 image generator. If you've got access to other systems that use the same things, all the principles here will still apply. Copilot Pro as opposed to Copilot just means I've got more paid to get some more boosts for my images so I can have fun doing more of these things. So I'm going to start the way that I typically start in the way most people typically start is to say, I want to generate an image and I'm just going to put in something really basic. So I might say, for instance, generate an image of a remote work setup, something like that. Now, I'm not giving it much information. And this is kind of where I've started often with this sort of stuff is a very almost lazy kind of prompt. The thing with this is that if you're not providing it with much detail, it's the luck of the draw as to what you're going to get here. So we'll see what happens here. I tested this one out before I started recording and I got something with a lot of cats in it. Now, there's no cats in these ones, but the previous one had cats. So if you're following along and you do the same prompt, let me know what you get, because the nature of generative AI is that it is creative. And if you give it space to work with, it's going to come up with all sorts of things. So you could generate the same thing again, get a completely different result. First tip here, I want you to think about, imagine the image in your mind, and I want you to try to describe it to someone else or write it as if it's a caption. So that's your first trick to thinking about how to give it a little bit more detail. This is a very nice home office setup, but it might not be at all what I had in mind. So let's try something different here. What I'm going to do is just click on this sort of new topic button. So when you use this with generative AI, it basically resets the topic each time. You can actually refine it. I'll show you that as well. You don't have to start again each time, but I just want to kind of do a clean slate and give you a new example here. See the difference between my two prompts? The first one was just an image of a remote work setup, which could be anything. As I said, I had cats the first time and nice kind of <laughs> warm sort of aesthetic the second time. This time I'm asking for something different, a modern remote work setup with a laptop on a desk. Look how different that is just by adding that little bit more detail and thinking about it as if it were a caption. Tip number two is that you can also describe the background. So I think what we tend to do is describe the thing we want Want to generate, but you don't think about the rest of the image of all of the things in the background here. So this prompt does something different. I've added a little bit more detail in here, but as well as asking for a modern remote work setup with a laptop on a desk, I'm now describing the other things in the picture as well. A comfortable chair, a clean organized background, including shelves with books and plants. And again, look at the difference this makes, like the three images that we've generated so far, I'm getting four of each, but I've generated three very different things. Another way you can use the background, it can actually be something quite simple. So let's take a look at this example here, something a little bit different. Create an image of an ice cream cone with chocolate ice cream and sprinkles. You'll see I'm getting quite different types of images. We're going to come back to the artistic styles in a little bit. And then I can change that. I can iterate the prompt, change the background to ombre, fading from yellow at the top to pink at the bottom. And look what I get now. So you can actually be very specific about how you want to describe the background. Give this video a like if you like chocolate ice cream, if you like pink and yellow or bright, or if you're getting value out of this, and please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm doing a heap more things on AI and prompting skills because this is something we all need to know how to do. Number, where are we up to now? That's number two. So we've so far had a look at describing it as a caption, describing the background. Number three now is all about adjectives. So what we're going to do, let's start again and pop this one in here, is add a lot more adjectives. And the other thing I'm doing with my adjectives here is actually describing the aesthetic or the mood or the feel that I want. So the more adjectives you put in here, again, you're going to get a much better result out of this. So think about how you want the image to make you feel or the style that you want in there. We haven't even got to the artistic style yet. This is still just describing the 
the vibe of the thing. Look at that. That's completely different again. Just to show you as well that even without a lot of adjectives, describing this idea of sort of the atmosphere or the, the, the mood that you want to create is a really effective technique. So here's another one. Create an image of a pile of books with a warm and cozy aesthetic. I haven't even described anything else about what I want going on. But look at this. This is... Oh, this is my happy place. Honestly, look at these beautiful books and warm candles and coffee cups and blankets and spices and things. It's beautiful. And then we can change it to say, change it to a fun and creative aesthetic. And look at that. So all I've done is say a pile of books. I've given it nothing else there to work with. But look at the difference between what's going on here and what's going on there simply by adding into the prompt the mood or the vibe I keep saying the vibe of the thing that I want to, to create in there. Now, the other thing that you can do here is to describe an artistic style. So before I get to that, if you're using Copilot, you've actually got something in here that you can use to explore some artistic styles. I'm going to show you how you can use this and then also how you can do more with it, even if you're not using Copilot. So let me grab one of these here. Let's grab this one and pick something that I like and zoom in a little bit more, you'll see that you've got a bunch of different artistic styles along the bottom here. So we can go pixel art, watercolor, block print. I quite like steampunk as, a, as an option and there's different things in here. So you can just choose one of those preset styles and it will regenerate the image. You've got the option here to reverse it if you don't like it or try out some of these different styles. So if you are using Copilot, oh, look at that. It's gone a bit weird. We'll come back to this point about text not a big fan of that one. Let's see how we go with pixel art instead. I might have got a better result using my ice cream image to play around with these things, but you'll see you've got the different styles in here. So importantly, as we wait for this to generate, when you're describing an artistic style, there we go. That's that's cute. I like that. Wow. Okay. looks good. <laughs> it's like this 8-bit sort of thing. So you can choose to keep that. What you can do, actually also I should show you while we're here, if you actually do create something that you really like, you've got the option to copy it, share, which means you can get a shareable link. So I can, um, why not? Look, you know what? I'm going to copy this link and I'll put it in the description if anyone wants to grab that one. And then what you can do is also choose to download it as an image. Or if you click edit in designer, that will actually open Microsoft designer, which is another piece of the uh, piece of the world that you've got available to you here to use with the Microsoft suite. And this is going to allow you to do a whole lot more image editing, making it part of a, uh, a bigger design or to do sort of much more in in the things that you can do with tweaking and changing the content in there we'll give that a second to come up and yeah you've got a heap of other things in here like blurring the background and removing the background and changing the filters but that's a whole other video if you're into Microsoft designer I need to explore that one another time so back to where we were here if you want to describe a particular style, so let's take something here where we're actually going to sort of describe the particular style. We'll grab a, a new topic here. You can do the same kind of prompt. So again, I've got all my stuff about the thing that I want to do, describing the atmosphere. I'm saying here in the style of a high quality digital rendering, I can actually say in the style of a um, watercolor painting or I could say in the style of a Polaroid Polaroid bear <laughs> I do like the autograph the um the autocomplete on this you've got a huge range of styles here don't just limit yourself to particular art styles think about art styles photography styles you can even I'll show you one in a minute do things with like origami or tapestry or clay so you can actually describe different mediums in here as well so there we go we've got things coming through sort of in that look at that that's like a Polaroid kind of um, photo style which is really cool now if like me you're not necessarily a expert in how to do these kinds of things here is my absolute top tip that I am very excited to share with you, which is that you can actually start to ask Copilot to help you with things. So before I get to that, one more thing here, please generate an image of the Eiffel Tower in an origami style. You see what I mean? How cute is this? Like it doesn't have to just be art or paintings. This is kind of coming up with something in a, um, in a little kind of cute medium of 
Oh, this is, that's my happy place too. <laughs> See how much fun I'm having with generating images now that I know what I'm doing with my prompts. So this is the other thing that you can do is actually ask Copilot to help you write a prompt or to help you understand a certain style. So you could have a style in mind and maybe if you just say in origami you're not really getting a good result, you can ask it to describe that for you in more detail. So ask Copilot to help you write the prompt best hack ever. The other thing you can do here, what I've done here is please help me describe the artistic style used in this image. You can actually add an image to your prompt. So I've just uploaded an image that I already had as part of my prompt and then it analyzes this and says this is an art deco style. There's a whole lot of things here and then I can say help me craft a prompt that I could use to describe this style to generate other images. So now look at all of this detail. Now I am no expert on this stuff but there's so much detail in here that could help me. So where I started with I like this style but I don't know what it's called and now I've got a great big you know, thing here. Let's kind of come in and grab this and try it. So we'll start with a new topic and I'll say create an image of the Eiffel Tower. And that embodies the essence and I've just basically taken that and we can put that in there. And you're going to get, especially if you're working with photography styles and things where you really want to refine the prompt in fine detail. This is something that um, you're going to be able to do a whole lot with. While we wait for that to finish generating three things that are almost always guaranteed to fail and it's not you, these are the traps to avoid with generating images. The first one is words. So an image of a cake to celebrate a work anniversary saying congratulations on five years Lisa. Uh, we've got congratulations, we've got it, there's a weird thing here, we've got a double I in Lisa, all of these options are going to come up with weird things, it just doesn't do words very well, you're much better to do what we looked at earlier and go into Microsoft Designer and add your words some other way. The next thing that it can't handle is asking for multiple, like a scene with multiple things in it, it gets it all very confused, so what we've got here is a an image of four people in a cartoon style and you'll see it's actually describing the four different people that should be in the image and there's a fair mix up of things here we're asking for things like a barbecue apron and beer uh, we do you know one of the daughters is meant to be wearing pink and the other one's meant to be wearing black um, we've got a beer <laughs> one of the daughter's hands there so it just sort of takes all of it and mushes it up so it doesn't do well with that kind of thing and then the other one that you're probably aware of if you've ever tried this at all is that it just doesn't do particularly well with people so I've asked for people at a training session in the workplace we've got all sorts of weird for some reason there's an astronaut in that one um, this guy seems to be sitting at the front <laughs> there's a lot of people crowded around you'll often get the wrong number of fingers and limbs and things so it is improving it's better than it used to be but just be wary of those three things so let me know how you go with your image prompting which of these tips actually really helped you out the most did you learn something here that you didn't know before don't forget to give this a like and subscribe to the channel how beautiful are these images as well and thank you so much for watching I've got a whole playlist here on other things you can do with Copilot and more to come on AI prompting